Katana Beard offered me private lessons slash drill practice. Mm. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today, we're jumping into r slash neck beard stories. You know how we do. We have also hit the final pledge goal on Patreon, so that means we will be doing double uploads from now until, uh, you know, whenever I, I can't physically do it anymore. <laughs> We're gonna see how it works out. The episodes might be a little bit shorter, but you'll be getting more episodes per day, which will also allow me to take breaks from stuff like Neckbeard Stories. You know, we can get a little more Nice Guys, Crackhead, Craigslist, all that other stuff that people are missing on this channel. So I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are excited for it. Let me know in the comments how you feel about it. And uh, with that little channel update out of the way, I guess we'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way. And then we will dive right into some neckbeard cringe. Beards of the round table. Oh, so valiant are they. <laughs> Gather round, ye lads and lasses, and hear the tales of the Lady Starship Spectre and the beards of the Round Table. <laughs> A tale of cringe and betrayal and perhaps even love. Although, I'd wager not. <laughs> There's like one directional love. Love has got to have two directions, doesn't it? Cast Star Spectre is our OP, an Amazonian of a woman, six foot one, Wow, that is Amazonian. <laughs> With a muscular but curvy build. I got ample TNA. Well, you know what our boy Big Boy from Outcast says about that, right? Especially the big girl, big girls need love to no discrimination this world. That's right. <laughs> Generally, I'm quite plain, but I do clean up real nice. I am geeky with gutter minded humor and an endless supply of enthusiasm. I joined my local HEMA. That's Historical European Martial Arts Club for funsies. Gutter-minded humor. Yep, that's why you found your way to Red X. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Katana Beard is the weeb leader and head instructor of the club. He is married, and of course, he owns many katanas. <laughs> Messer Beard, assistant leader slash instructor. Creeper, never actually teaches. Well, those are the best kind of teaching jobs, aren't they? <laughs> they just pay me to show up. Rapier beard. That's probably not a good name. I mean, I know it's a type of sword, but it implies some stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> he is an instructor. He is married, and he is also the whitest of knights. Okay, good. Then rapier beard is not the rapey one. <laughs> I don't know if we can handle any more stories like that. We're, we're taking a break from that type of story. We got Rondell Beard. He's a student slash wrestling instructor. He's also married. A little stocky army guy with a big attitude. And he does indeed have that beard on the inside. I'm not going to plug the t-shirt because you already know, but Teespring link is in the description. Shit, I just plugged the t-shirt. Ah, I, I can't help myself. <laughs> Feather Beard is also a student. Soft and squishy and quiet like a wet bread roll. He just kind of stares from afar, and he worships Rondell Beard. Montant Beard, also a student, very large and greasy, gives off majorly sus vibes. Found out later that my vibes were confirmed. He also, for some reason, worships Rondell Beard. And then we have Precious Bean, that's Rondell Beard's wife, the sweetest, softest, kindest little den mother of a woman. Well, it seems like we got a whole ton of neck beards to deal with today. Not necessarily all of them are going to be bad people. I remind you, some neck beards are indeed human, but we got to watch out for the ones that ain't. You know what I'm saying? So we'll point those ones out and we will pick on them as deserved. <laughs> I never thought that I was neck beard bait. I'm not small or young or feminine or very submissive, and I'm definitely not Asian. But I found out from this experience that I am the seductive succubus of a beta male's wet dreams. Uh, apparently. Yeah, basically any chick that plays with swords is gonna, uh, turn some heads in the neckbeard crowd, I think. I joined my local HEMA club because 
Being a geek of full historical fantasy daydreams, I just had to. At my first lesson, Katana Beard taught, We only have one heart, so... The response he expected was, Always protect your heart, like with your shield. But my smart-ass self said, OP, Sir, but I'm a Time Lord. I have two hearts. <laughs> I know. Go ahead and cringe. I mean, Doctor Who reference, that's not too bad. You're in good company, I'm sure. <laughs> I can hear the shock and awe behind me. A girl who's pretty and a geek. There were usually one or two other girls in the class. They were super nice and super geeky, but also very shy, socially awkward, and not very likely to try and step into the limelight. I'm still friends with a few of them. Good gals. During the first few lessons, I released the Kraken of my nerdiness. Doctor Who, Mass Effect, The Princess Bride, everything. <laughs> I was so happy to be amongst folk who actually got my geeky references. Yeah, the real rub comes when you start making quotes from like, <laughs> neckbeard stories or to catch a predator or something like that. <laughs> then nobody gets what you're talking about. And that's the best kind of reference, I think. Anyways, a few months down the line, though, I started to notice that I was getting extra attention from the instructors and stares from several of the male students. But it all just hit the fan when word got around that I was single and bisexual. I don't know why bisexual applies here, but okay. <laughs> Rapier Beard had become quite a good friend. We chatted most days about life and its general trials. I was longtime single and returning to school in my early 30s for a second career. Mucho stressful. Early 30s ain't too late. Get it in while it's getting good, you know? <laughs> but then this man, this beard, offered to speak to his wife about allowing me into their bed. Oh, God. Rapier beard the first to fall. <laughs> I guess my initial assessment was correct. <laughs> Because clearly, I just needed some human intimacy, and he was only too glad to attempt to provide it. Because he was such a good friend. And to be clear, only if his wife was okay with it. <laughs> uh, holy crap. He asked for the consent of his wife, but not the woman he's propositioning. <laughs> uh, what the hell? Ugh, oh, Katana Beard offered me private lessons slash drill practice mm, at his home. <laughs> uh, and he told me about his devotion to the Pacino way of life. Wow. Also, he'd drone on and on about how a katana must be properly made, and most katanas that people used were just glorified wall hangings that they didn't even know how to use properly. Yep, nothing makes the ladies come running quicker than talk of Bushido code. <laughs> uh, what? Montant Beard, who rarely attended class, would corner me at club parties, and ask if I wanted to have a threesome with him and his legbeard girlfriend. <laughs> oh, God! Uh, now I see why the bisexual thing applies. Holy crap. Of course, OP declined this generous offer because they were both obese and greasy and alcoholic and smelled. The wife would also corner me at parties to drunkenly tell me oh, how sexy I was! And I had to hide from both of them. <laughs> After the first club function, I'm good. I'm not showing up no more. <laughs> Messer Beard seemed to be overly attentive. I didn't find out about how creepy he was acting until later, though, through the grapevine. I guess more on that a bit later. Fetter Beard was essentially harmless. Basically a pasty, chubby man-child. Rondell Beard kept trying to hook me up with him because they were buddies. Yeah, that's how it works. See my friend over there? Why don't you go bag him? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, not gonna happen. And then, of course, there is Rondell Beard himself. When I first joined the club, I actively avoided him. He bragged about being in the army and about all his accomplishments, and overall just seemed to be a douche. He was the perfect example of, it's the beard on the inside that counts. Plug the t-shirt. <laughs> He was short, 
and stocky, but fit and well-groomed, and he knew how to wear deodorant, and he was so very confident. Maybe that's why I eventually fell victim to him. OP, no! <laughs> In comparison to all the other scruffy, beardy, awkward nerds of the club, he was dashing indeed. He was also the hand-to-hand -hand combat expert and taught the grappling portion of the class. Yes, there is an element of wrestling in medieval sword fighting. I guess that makes sense. What happens if you drop your sword or something? You gotta grapple him! And I definitely know why this guy was uh, <laughs> so quick to take up the mantle of teaching the grappling portion. Ugh. After trying unsuccessfully to hook me up with his club buddies, Rondell Beard started flirting with me. He was married, so I figured it was harmless joking. Now let me be extremely clear here that if he is married, that is not harmless joking. That's disrespectful to him, disrespectful to his wife. You need to nip that in the bud ASAP. But it was not nipped in the bud. So eventually, he started smacking OP's ass with the flat of his sword and winking, and then accidentally grabbing her tatas during grappling lessons. God, it's just fucking assault at this point, isn't it? Jesus, why are you still going to this club? <laughs> I'm good, man. Ugh. I blame pheromones for me getting involved with Rondell Beard. I was lonely and had been single for many years, but suddenly practicing full contact wrestling with mostly men, he called me his best student who had a gift for wrestling and knew how to throw my weight around. One night at a club barbecue, when I had had just enough to drink, I'm the kind of person that gets really touchy and flirty when I drink, he approached me about having a threesome with him and his wife, Precious Bean. I'd only just met her that night. She's not really my type, but not someone I'd really hate to fool around with either, so I said, sure, I'd be interested. Oh god, I hate where this story is going. <laughs> What have I gotten myself into? Rondell Beard said, Okay, let me discuss it with my wife. <laughs> uh, yeah, the wife is the last person you ask about this. <laughs> okay, buddy. He hadn't even talked to her about it first. See, OP knows. <laughs> this should have been my first red flag that he was a controlling asshole, but that's a story for another day. Flash forward about a year, I'm still sword fighting and still romantically involved with Ron Delbeard and Precious Bean. There was a whispered, though never proven or legally pursued, accusation against Ron Delbeard from another girl in the club of inappropriate touching during grappling lessons. Of course, the accusation came not from the girl herself, but from another unnamed Beard trying to help a lady seek justice. <laughs> Uh, because of course, beards are just the quickest to stab each other in the back. They're like, why does he get to feel those boobas and I don't? <laughs> uh, when really, he would probably do the exact same thing. I don't know if that's fair. I mean, that's painting with a pretty broad brush, all these beards, but that nice big brush does get the fence painted faster. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, suddenly, the whole club is pitted against each other and not just in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Messer Beard starts emailing the girls of the club to warn them to never be alone with Rondell Beard and to express his fear for Precious Bean and their young daughter. Oh God, they have a kid? The Beards are reproducing? Don't tell me that. Ugh. Katana Beard strips away Rondell Beard's position as instructor and kicks him out of the club. Well, that's something at least. He wasn't following the Bushido code! <laughs> Rapier Beard messages me to tell me how concerned he is that I'm involved with a sexual predator and how he knows I'm a strong woman, aka my lady, but... And he continues to spend a whole day lecturing me about the dangers of this man and why I shouldn't be alone with him. Featherbeard and Montant Beard leave the club with Rondell Beard because they indeed were convinced of his innocence. Of course. We flash forward another year. I think it's fast forward, by the way. <laughs> Myself, Rondell Beard, Fetter Beard, Montant Beard, and a handful of other local knights. <laughs> oh, God. 
Local knights, yeah, not affiliated with the club, are doing a sword fighting demo at a convention. One says in passing that the reason Ron Delbeard was kicked out of the club was because he got with Star Spectre! And in doing so, had succeeded where Katana Beard, Messer Beard, and Rapier Beard had all failed. OP? Wait, what? Other Knight? Oh, yeah! Katana Beard was in the middle of divorcing his wife, and Messer Beard was going around saying that Rondell Beard stole you from him, and that you were his. He had called dibs! <laughs> uh, ah, yes. The legendary and unbreakable law of dibs. <laughs> I called dibs on that milady. OP just stands there in stunned silence. The other knight says, They were jealous of him, and that accusation was just an excuse to kick him out. They didn't think that you would leave with him. Featherbeard sheepishly, Yeah, I tried to date you as well. Montantbeard, before I met my girlfriend, <laughs> I was going to ask you out, too. Other night? Pretty much everyone in the club was trying to ask you out. And because you ended up with Ron Delbeard, they got super pissed. OP, but I just wanted to learn sword fighting. <laughs> That's not what this has been about the whole time. Other night, laughing. <laughs> if you think about it, you're kind of like the Yoko Ono of the Hema Club. <laughs> OP, stunned silence. Everyone, <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> so that's how I found out that I was the Holy Grail. And the path into my pants was a quest that led to the destruction of the beards of the round table. The original club eventually reformed and rebranded, and another club was formed from the remains, and a few of us absconded to another HEMA club in town. This is less fun with stabby stabby good times and more serious study. We shall stay true to the source manuscripts. And the Bushido Code! <laughs> but nevertheless, it was a good club. I haven't been back to fighting since the lockdown. Maybe that's for the best. <laughs> And since I've also broken up with Ron Delbeard, though that story is less cringe and more flat-out abuse, I don't know if I'll ever go back. Many thanks for hearkening to my tale, gentle folk, and be ye well. TLDR, joined a sword fighting club full of neckbeards, and they broke up the club because they all wanted to bone me. <laughs> what an absolute shit show. <laughs> what else can I really say about this story, but holy god. Just an entire group of people who are absolutely out of their fucking minds. It's good you got out, OP, and I would suggest either never going back or forming a club that you can vet the members for yourself. Maybe Ramtide and Adelaide can help you out with that. <laughs> While the story is funny and quite ridiculous, it also makes me a bit sad because tales exactly like this happen every single day. This is the reason why women stay out of quote unquote nerd spaces because every time they try and get into it even if they are legitimately interested in it they have like this giant target on their back and everybody's just trying to get in their pants and god what an absolute horror show <laughs> i was super glad that you got away unfortunately one of them beards did get his hooks in you and we all know how that one goes i don't know if you ever feel like sharing that story it sounds like it's gonna be a bit of a heavy one I will be here, a listening ear, if you'd like to, but I will uh, consume with caution, as we all should with beard stories, you know? I hope you guys did enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments. You know, like, subs, all that stuff, sharing the video around, super, super helpful. Check out them links in the description. We got plenty of plugs down there, social medias. Oh, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them all as always, but especially Fatboy Shrimp, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Teddy the Police, Erin W, Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Levison, Silent Revolver, Zathras, Zero MMX, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Stower, Caustic Fox, Derpy Trick, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, OG James Cook, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Miss Monday, Melgar the Destroyer, Mirthful Baker, my boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nicks, 
Katie Kins and Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ass, Siegfried, Steampunk Ellie, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Treeberg, Redwin, Goose Says Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, John Indoors, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, That's a Different Jerry. <laughs> Crafty Kitty Cat, maybe next time, or Gammy Cam, Princess Rosalie, The Last Shinobi, and the maestro himself, Zuka Cervantes. My goodness, we've also got a new friend joining us. Welcome to the fold, Calvacus. Boy, I'm going to have to update this patron list sooner rather than later. Patreon's been popping off, I tell you. And I could not be more appreciative. We're smashing some uh, Patreon pledge goals, as I might have mentioned at the beginning, which is... Absolutely amazing. I'll have to come up with some new pledge goals now because <laughs> that's how it works, right? You don't just hit a goal and go, okay, I'm good with that. You got to find what's next. So I'm hoping that whatever's next will be enough to help even more people decide to pledge. I will be getting those rewards out for the pledged patrons within the next couple of days. I hope you guys will take advantage of those. And if you haven't pledged yet, then I do hope that you will consider it. I would be eternally grateful. I want you guys to always remember to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Additionally, always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye.